turnout in Clyde, and we were graced with a beautiful day. This is one of the best turnouts we have had in I don't know how long. Is that Greenwood in June? And I believe once we get the count done, we'll probably wind up with about 50 airplanes today. So I want to thank all of you for taking the time to come out. And before we get started, I'm going to let Danny, who is ramrodding this outfit, say a few words. And then there's another lady that wants to talk to you, and then we'll get on with our program. Danny? Okay? All right, good morning, everybody, once again. Um, I think that in a lot of what has happened recently, before we go any further, the best thing that we can do is do the Pledge of Allegiance. You want me with that? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Before we go any further, just a few words from our county council chairperson, uh, Ms. Barbara Clark. She's not the typical politician in the sense that she is a friend of aviation. Uh, she goes to the uh, South Carolina Aviation Association meeting, and she has been doing that now for a number of years. So therefore, we thank her and the county administrator, Andrew Fulton, for being great friends of aviation. Uh, we need, as pilots, we need uh, people in high places because we're a small group and uh, we just need all the support that we can possibly get. Uh, Chairwoman Clark, please. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So the colonel, he kept telling the colonel, I want to fly a plane. 
because you know in Colombia they have a part where they take off, come back, take off, and come back. So the colonel took him up there and took him in the simulator. And he said, let me do it, let me land. The colonel said, I don't think you know how to land this. He said, yes I can. And he put him in the simulator. He landed. The colonel came out with both his hands up, hollering and screaming. He said, this kid just landed a plane. And I said, well, watch him because he may be in yours outside. <laughs> He's very inquisitive. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for coming out and supporting this magnificent airport director that we have here, Mr. Danny Lucas. Thank you. Thank you. Before we uh, go on the program, just to recognize a few of our partners, Mr. Rodriguez, back here from Savannah Aviation. Real quick. If you don't mind, I'll grab the floor for about two minutes. Um, first off, uh, I used to live in South Carolina. I live in Savannah now, but I was part of the EAA chapter down in Sumter. Does anyone remember the great uh, fly-in of Shaw Air Force Base of 2016? It was my crew that actually uh, planned that event, so really happy that we were able to do that. I've since moved to Savannah, uh, retired from the Air Force, I'm now a flight instructor out there, and we go to the original airport on a regular basis. It's the closest airport, uncontrolled airport, that we can do operations, and thanks to the folks down here in uh, Ridgeland, we couldn't be happier with the uh, support that we get from that. And on that note, I'd like to publicly thank you, Danny for what you do for us uh, in Savannah Aviation for our students and what we can actually do. So I'd like to present this to you. Uh, just a couple of more. Uh, Mark Bailey is here as the commander of the Low Country uh, Composite Squadron of the Civil Air Patrol. And so we would like to uh, get a lot more of these young people, STEM kids, <coughs> science, technology, engineering, and math involved with the Civil Air Patrol. So if you're out there somewhere, Mark, and your guys, please uh, network with some of these people. Otherwise, uh, please give Mr. Bailey and the Civil Air Patrol a call to get these young people uh, sufficiently situated. Um, let's see, who else we got? I think that's, um, I think that's about it. Um, but as a 38-year pilot and an aircraft owner of a Piper Aero 4, I am overjoyed to see the Pipers out here, Beach, Mooney, uh, Sesame, the entire group. So without further delay, Tony, let's go ahead and get on with the breakfast. Not his name. Before we get going, I always like to recognize the folks who put this on and the people almost as important, if not more so, who fix the food for us. Country Kitchen, two out there. Those folks put together one very nice breakfast. We didn't have any grits, so I don't get to give them a grits ready. <laughs> but they did do a wonderful job. So let's give them a hand. Now, how many people do we have here who have never been to a breakfast club? All right. That's not a bad turn. Right. Congratulations. Y'all are now lifetime members. <laughs> this organization started in 1938. It was started by a gentleman by the name of Thomas Summers in Orangeburg. He was looking for a way to get a little bit of father-daughter time with his daughter Sylvia, who was still living in Orangeburg. And they would get together early in the mornings, on Sunday morning before church, and go out and fly to a different place in the state and have some breakfast. And pretty soon, some of his friends who also flew got wind of what he was doing and would call him and say, where are you going this week? We'll meet you. And that is how, from those humble beginnings, that this organization started. They have had many adventures. We have had been to some interesting places. And thanks to Casey Tupper, who's been doing our history and the research, we have seen pictures where the Breakfast Club has landed. And I keep getting Lamar and Tim's will mix up. Lamar. Lamar. Now think about this, back in, I think it was the late 40s, early 50s, early 50s, they landed on the main street of downtown Lamar, backed the airplanes up to the storefronts and went into the restaurant and had breakfast, 
got back in airplanes and took off on Main Street. Let's do that again. <laughs> <laughs> I think we ought to try to do that. I think we might get on the ground, but I don't think they'd let us off. We also found some pictures where they landed on the beach somewhere on the coast, set up some tables, and had breakfast on the beach. And one of my favorite stories, Sylvia was telling me that he had, in this particular episode, back then they had more engine issues than we have nowadays. And it was not terribly uncommon to have an engine failure for one reason or another. Now on this particular occasion, Mr. Summers and his wife were going to the breakfast club and they had an engine failure down along the coast. And he said, I'm gonna have to put it on the beach. She looked at him and said, Thomas, you can't put it on the beach. Those people have no clothes on. <laughs> and she, he said, honey, I don't think you'll understand. We're leaving. So, interesting episodes, interesting adventures, and we continue to have them, and I want to thank you all for being a part of that. Now, as an extension of that, we also try to recognize people who have come the farthest to come to the breakfast club. What man do we have who has flown the farthest to get here this morning? What kind of distances do we have? 200. 200? From where? Wilmington, North Carolina. Not bad. Anybody else come in farther from Wilmington? Yeah, I think from Winston-Salem. Winston-Salem, how far? 218. Sorry? 218. 218. All right. We've got 218. Anybody else? I know I heard somebody had come in from Atlanta, but I don't think they've got you beat. Well, congratulations. <laughs> I appreciate you taking the time to come in. Now, what woman do we have who has come the farthest to get here this morning? Oh, what were you flying for? Bonanza. Very well. <laughs> what woman do we have that's come the farthest this morning? You lady father out there? have a lady that's out here. <laughs> Casey, he is our 
historian, and Wendy Griffin is our secretary. She's the one that organizes all of this. We couldn't do any of this without her book. All right. The next up is the ball. Now, the ball, for those of you who do not know, was an early tradition. The ball was to be awarded to the person who made the worst landing and arrived at the breakfast club. And early on, that person had to take the ball with him and bring it back to that breakfast club. But they lost so many balls between 1938 and 1946 that from that point on, the president just held on to the ball. And if any of y'all had seen that poor little ball that Gerald used to carry around with him, <laughs> it's still sitting in his hangar in what's left of that bowling ball bag that he used to carry. And it's been through two airplane wrecks with him. And we got to the point where people were making such good landings that we had to start picking excuses for the most unusual airplane, the best landing if you were flying a tailwheel. So does anybody have a candidate to sign the ball this morning? Did anybody make a bad landing? I didn't see one. Most of them are on film, so if you did, we'll know. <laughs> Does anybody have a candidate for the sign of the ball for any reason? Marvelous flights. Well, they got Pat for that.
The runway that you landed on is a new runway that was commissioned on February 2nd of 2020. Uh, as we like to say, we're basically building a new airport on the campus of the old airport. We turned the old runway 321 into a taxiway. And so next year when you come, we'll have a fuel farm right over here with Jenny as well as under octane low lead. We'll also have, when you come next year, uh, AWOS, okay, and probably an instrument approach. And in a couple of years, right over here against the fence will be our um, location of our new terminal building. And then over here to our north, the location uh, in a couple of years, uh, some additional tea hangers. So things are on the move here, and uh, we really do appreciate you for, uh, for coming down. But we'll look forward to meeting more room and a bigger tent. Exactly. All right. Next meeting will be on February 7th in Buford. The next year we're going to be down in this part of the state. That's February 7th at uh, Ladies Island, Alpha Romeo Whiskey. Then the next one's in Georgetown, Golf Golf Echo, right up the coast. Head up the coast and count the third airport and then land. <laughs> then March 7th, we'll be back at Low Country, Mount Pleasant. So you just leave Georgetown, come down to it, come down one airport. Those will be easy to find. And then March 24th, uh, excuse me, 21st, is Gillian over near Columbia, just south of Columbia. Now, one of the things Gerald used to always say, if you come to these things often enough, you won't need a map to get around. You just look down at the man's outhouse and know which way to turn to get to where you want to go. And we've got these schedules up here. If y'all want schedules, um, just come up here. is the flower fund. We have, over the last few years, lost a number of our members, our past president being one of them a couple years ago. And we used to be able, so we used to have a flower fund that we could use to send flowers as a sign of our appreciation for the participation and to show our respect uh, and condolences to the people who passed. Now, if you are interested in contributing it. A lot of people will take some of the money they win in the lotto and put back in it. We're also taking donations. We'll put in the flower fund so that we'll keep enough money in it so that when we lose one of our members, we'll be able to send flowers to their uh, service and uh, show our appreciation. So please remember that. Um, Y'all got anything else? I've got some of these blue envelopes you can use to send the flower fund money if you wish, or you can just, uh, Wendy, Wendy takes care of the flower fund money and uh, puts it in the bank, so just give it right to her. Yes, ma'am. And in case some of you do not know, this lady over here taking pictures, she's the one that does the videos for the breakfast club every week. And she uh, will be moving fast and furious between now and Tuesday trying to get this thing done. We've got a lot of work. The more airplanes we have, the more work she has to go through. And also get her Facebook. She does the face, our internet presence. Michael Publico is our Facebook administrator. Everybody's here. Everybody's here. All right. I guess y'all are ready for the lotto, huh? Hey! Hey! <coughs> oh, okay. Little lot of Fifteen hundred bucks. <laughs> this is not a Walmart <laughs> board. Oh, by the way, we have, 
Where's Jess? Is she already gone? Somebody left. Boy, she's like mine. Okay. We had <laughs> Jessica Trimble here. She's an A&P. She works in Canada. So she can do your aim. And I'm going to get the young lady to attain the furthest. Katie, could you draw a ticket for us, please, ma'am? I want y'all to know that the very last breakfast club in Winsboro that Gerald Ballard came to, he won a lot of them. All right. First number is a seven. Yay. Yay. All right. We're still in business. Second number is a one. Yeehaw. Third number is a zero. Yay. All right. We're starting to get serious now. I'm sure nobody's got anything else they want to say. I won. <laughs> Next number is a three.